Then you get caught in this like mental jail where you have to repeat things over and over and over again. In my head. Hey there everybody. So for anybody who's new, I think I'm just going to start saying this for people who are new. I am um, a mental health YouTuber and I do videos Monday through Friday talking about mental health. Very often I do like what I'm doing tonight which is going for a walk and just kind of speaking what's on my mind, whatever happens to be the topic of the day that comes up. Um, although you're always welcome to comment and suggest things. Um, but tonight I want to talk about OCD. So um, my hair is a mess. Uh, not that you really care that much, but I care. I care that my hair is a little bit kind of messy and gross, so hopefully I'll be cutting it and coloring it soon. It's one of those things where like I have to kind of like let it nag on me a little bit and then I'll do it. Uh, but tonight we'll talk about OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and um, actually all of the obsessive compulsive disorders, because there is more than one. And I don't know, for whatever reason, it just kept coming to the top of my mind. And I haven't done anything on anxiety in a while. I actually started this channel with the topic of anxiety. That Those videos don't get a lot of views. <laughs> uh, but they're out there, and so maybe it's time to revisit those subjects. OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. So if you break the word down, and I know I'm probably recapping for people who are pretty familiar with it already, but give me a little chance here to just give it for those who don't know. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. So you have obsessions, which are thoughts that keep repeating over and over and over in your head. And then you have compulsions, which are actions that are intended to stop the thoughts, slow them down, or bring some sense of relief so that the thoughts um, go away. Um, that's a general way of saying it. People may experience it a little bit differently. Um, so people typically think OCD, I don't know why, but people typically think that it's the, um, I'm sorry, I'm very like poorly dressed tonight because it's like cold in the air, but I was afraid it was going to rain, so I had to put a hood on. It's not good. Um, but back to OCD, it's people for some reason think of like hand washing and, um, you know, th granted, that could be a form of OCD. It could be that you wash your hands because you have um, some kind of um, fear of germs or something, maybe a phobia. Um, maybe the phobia leads into an OCD. Um, you People think of like checking the locks, and I know somebody who's done this before, checking the locks constantly, making sure things are unplugged, um, constantly checking. That would be the obsessing. Um, and actually, checking is the compulsing, excuse me, obsessing would be the worry that comes along. So obsessive compulsive disorder, um, it kind of goes hand in hand with anxiety and anxiety disorders. But the, typically the reason why we're obsessing over something is uh, because of an anxiety, because of some kind of fear that is not necessarily something that we're facing right now, which would be a rational fear. These are irrational fears, something that we're anticipating, something that we're thinking is going to happen in the future, something where we fear has already happened, but it's going to affect us. Um, so that's OCD. And what we're going to go over the different disorders, so let me just try to do a quick breakdown. So OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, is just like the basic um, thing that people experience. Then you have, and let's see if I can remember them all, because there's a, a quite a few and I don't like regularly go over them. There's um, Body Dysmorphic Disorder, which people usually think is an eating disorder, but it's not. It's an Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, and it's when you feel like there's something about your body that needs to be changed. Um, this is the kind of thing where that's it's been kind of... Um, sensationalized maybe a little bit on TV with the people who do multiple surgeries to try to change their body. That's most likely a body dysmorphic disorder. Um, it's what, but it doesn't have to be that extreme. It could be that you think like there's a mark on your face and you don't really like that mark and maybe you you constantly pick at it. So that leads me to another one which is the excoriation disorder. Um, that If you're picking at a mark specifically because you feel it's a blemish, that would be body dysmorphic disorder. It could be a blemish on your skin. It could be a blemish with like eye color. Like it doesn't have to be 
try to like open your mind and think a little bit outside the box here. It doesn't have to be the things that we think. Like it could be that someone thinks that they're too fat. It could be so that they think they're too skinny. It could be um, that there's like a crease in their eyebrow. Like it doesn't, it could be anything. Anything about your personal body that doesn't feel right and you obsess over it. And typically there's some kind of compulsion, whether that be um, excessive working out um, there is an unhealthy way of working out um, when you do it to excess, when it's this obsession to try to change something about your body. Um, it could be um, spending hours on makeup and hair and things um, specifically to cover something up. I just want to make a, a disclaimer here, like some people do hours on makeup and hair and stuff because they like to do it. You know, I do makeup every day and I don't need makeup every day. I don't go out every day, but I just do it as a habit because it's um, easier for me that way if it's a habit. That way I can just kind of I have a routine around it and then I just have it on for when I need it but um, OCD body dysmorphic disorder specifically is when you're obsessing over some kind of thing that you feel is a blemish or a flaw or something that's negative about your body uh, then I mentioned excoriation disorder so that's skin picking disorder and that's where you pick at your skin uh, anywhere on your skin. It doesn't have to be your face. It could be shoulder. It could be leg. It could be knee. It could be foot. It could be anything. Um, and it doesn't have to be because you don't like a part of your body. It, this is just plain picking of your skin. It's obsessional and you know it's a problem, especially when it starts to lead to like marks on your skin or um, I forget exactly what it leads to if it's like dermatitis or I'm probably getting that wrong but it leads to some kind of medical problem because you're picking so much that you're damaging the skin uh, that's when it becomes a real a problem where you definitely need to be seeing somebody you should be seeing somebody anyway to try to stop it before it gets to that point but uh, that's excoriation disorder something similar is trichotillomania which is pulling of hair uh, and this is actually something I did in high school at a very small level like it, it was mild and thankfully it never continued past mild but I used to pick at my eyelashes actually um, which I think is kind of common but people don't realize it so you, you could pick at your hair you could pick at eyelashes eyebrows um, any body hair anything that would be trichotillomania very similar to excoriation disorder um, then you have hoarding disorder which, um, you know, again, something that was kind of popularized on TV where you um, have a hard time letting go of objects, letting go of things. These, you typically think of the person who has like a hundred plastic bags um, or empty bottles around their house, that kind of a thing. But it could just be at a more mild level again. It could be that you just have a lot of junk uh, around and you just have a hard time getting rid of it. Um, again, it's going to depend on your specific situation, whether or not that's a disorder. Uh, but it, it, it's all related to this idea of having obsessions and compulsions. So when it comes to hoarding, the obsession would be like, I need to keep this around or something bad is going to happen. Now, am I missing any here? Obsessive compulsive disorder. We had trichotillomania, excoriation disorder, body dysmorphic disorder, hoarding disorder. Hopefully I'm not with missing one. I don't think I am. I apologize if I'm missing one, but I'm going to keep walking and then we'll talk about um, something, some ways that I experienced it. Why not? Something that I think people don't realize about OCD if they haven't experienced them, it themselves is it is incredibly stressful. It's like when you don't do the compulsions. Um, well, let me just talk about how I experienced it. So I used to do like accounting OCD. So I used to feel like specifically in the shower, like getting ready for the day. I guess I used to just have a high anxiety and I used to feel like, um, and actually I should mention, sometimes we call the compulsions rituals because that's what they feel like, like it's a ritual that you're doing. So I did this like ritual where I felt like I had to count to a number. And I think for me, it was kind of like an arbitrary number each time. Like I would just pick a number like 11 or six or something. And I would have to count to that number. But there was like something in my head about, I guess the way that I had to do it, like I had to do it in a certain rhythm 
or I, I really don't even remember. This was a really long time ago, and I don't really like to talk about um, disorders unless I've experienced them myself, but I'm trying to push myself to talk about disorders anyway, even if I haven't experienced them, because I, uh, I don't ever want to offend anybody, and I don't ever want to explain it in a way that makes it sound like it's not true. <laughs> like, like, anyway, that's a whole other issue, but I, I have experienced OCD, and for me, I felt like I had to do it a certain way. I had to count a certain way. And like I could get to the number, let's just say it was 11. I could get to 11, but then if I felt like on the way there I didn't do it right, I had to do it again. And it's, it's the anxiety. It's a feeling. It's not like we know. People who have OCD, you know it's not logical. You know you shouldn't have to be doing these things. But the anxiety kind of like automatically drives you to do it anyway. And then you get caught in this like mental jail where you have to repeat things over and over and over again and it's frustrating because not only are you stuck thinking whatever it is you know for me it was the counting stuck thinking the numbers but here i am in the shower <laughs> counting so i'm stuck in the shower then you have the anxiety that comes along with it so the anxiety is there and then as you do the compulsions and they're not necessarily working because remember they're supposed to make it better they're supposed to relieve the anxiety so if you're doing them and they're not relieving the anxiety or you feel like you're personally doing them wrong and that's why the anxiety is not going away then it's just like the anxiety builds more and it gets it like it's almost like you're stepping on the gas pedal and you start getting more and more anxious and you for me it was like okay now I have to count faster so I would count faster but then that wasn't the right pace so that would screw me up again. I have to start at the beginning again. And it was this constant cycling. I'm laughing. It's not actually funny at all, but I'm laughing because I can look at it from the outside now and be like, it doesn't make any sense. Like I knew at the time it didn't make any sense, but it's just, it, it, in the moment, it's incredibly frustrating. And like I said, it feels like you're locked down in mental jail. Like you, you can't escape. You just have to do the compulsions. Um, so, something to be aware of here those compulsions for me they were all in my head there was nothing for you to see on the outside other than I was then I was maybe in the shower you know but if, if you didn't know me like why would you ever know that I had an issue and that's the case for a lot of um, people with OCD not everything always shows up on the outside you don't always see it visibly so people can go throughout their day doing compulsions and doing stuff in their head and there's a form of OCD called pure O OCD where it's all obsession in your head and the compulsions are the thoughts. It's, it's, that's where it gets like a little trippy. It's, um, it's a little bit like what I was doing with the counting because you're obsessing and then the compulsion is another thought that counteracts the earlier thought. So this whole thing can go on in your head and be totally unknown to the outside world and then you're really like living in your own private hell <laughs> and you don't want to tell other people because you feel like people are going to look at you poorly people are going to think that you are crazy when you tell them what's going on and it's frustrating so um oh gosh I'm losing track of thoughts because there's stuff going on around me give me a second <laughs> Okay, I know what else I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about um, intrusive thoughts, which come along with OCD very often. An intrusive thought, it's not exclusive to OCD, um, but it's when a thought comes into your head and it's typically, let's see if I can remember, blasphemous. So like um, against a religion or something that's, you, you don't do that in a religion, um, or it is violent or it is sexual in nature. I think those are the three categories that there typically are. So you could have a thought, for example, all of it, you, I could be talking to you right now, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, no logical thing, like nothing <laughs> prompted it, but all of a sudden, out of nowhere, almost like there was a zap in my head, I have a thought about raping a baby. Like I see it in front of me, I feel the baby, and it's like, oh my God, what the hell just happened? And that's an intrusive thought. Or it could be, like I'm talking to you and then all of a sudden I have a thought of grabbing your head and snapping it. And it's like, uh, that's not who I am. That's, I've never been that kind of person. So why am I having this thought? And it's really alarming. It's very jarring. It can get your anxiety to go up like a whole bunch of levels really quickly. 
Um, and sometimes we have that thought and then it sparks an OCD chain where now you're trying to get rid of the thought, but the more you try to get rid of the thought, the more you think it, and then you start thinking, am I a horrible person? Why am I having this thought? And then uh, it's, it's, it's just a spiral of madness. Um, the good news is you're not an evil person. You're not a horrible person if you have these thoughts. They're just things that happen. They are normal. They happen to, I believe they happen to everybody. I don't think you just have to have a mental disorder. Like I, I've had periods of my life where I just had a thought like, I'm just gonna drive this car right off into the median. There was no reason for me to think that. Um, so they, they just happen. It's okay to have intrusive thoughts, but unfortunately they often spark OCD. And um, there's somebody on YouTube who I started following, Chrissy Hodges. She talks about a lot of this stuff on her channel, so if you're interested, she may be a good resource to check out. And there's somebody else, I'm going to forget the name, I think it's Catherine Daff? Oh gosh, I'll try to link them in the description, but those are two channels which I found helpful just kind of learning about some of this stuff. But it's okay. It's okay to have intrusive thoughts. It's okay to have OCD, and it's okay to tell somebody you have OCD. It's perfectly fine. Um, it's, it's common. It's pretty common. I mean, I'm not going to say everybody has it. Obviously not everybody has it, but people will understand. Uh, if you find the right people, I always say you got to find the right people because there's always people who are judgmental and rude and, you know, you probably know who those people are. But if you know somebody who's gener generally kind and generally empathetic, talk to them. I'm going to keep walking and think about this some more. My glasses keep fogging up. Let's see, there was two things I wanted to say. One of them was therapy and treatment, but first I wanted to say, when we have OCD, and you know, I've talked about all different kinds of forms here. It doesn't have to be like counting or hand washing or checking locks, remember? It can be blemishes on your body, it could be picking at your hair, whatever it is. We feel like the compulsion part of it is going to fix it. We feel like we just have to perform the ritual, the compulsion, enough times or in the right way or the right order, and that's going to get rid of the anxiety. And sometimes it does. And that's part of what confuses us is we, um, we get like a reward and then we feel like, okay, that's the way to deal with this. That's how you handle this problem. But that's not the correct way to handle the problem. Um, very often we seek reassurance from other people when we have like a puro form of OCD and we feel like if I just get somebody else to tell me that I'm not crazy or I'm not making this up or like maybe they can dig down with me and look at what's going on and they can help me figure it out then they will be able to convince me that it's okay and then I can like <sighs> relax and release but that's not how it works with OCD. As you saw with my counting, I could get to the number 11, but then it would be, there would always be one little thing wrong. There's always like one thing you did wrong. You didn't do it right. And it repeats and it repeats and repeats. And even if you get it right sometimes and that stops the OCD, that's not the right way to deal with it. That's not coping with it. Coping with it would be learning to manage it. So the traditional treatment for um, OCD is uh, exposure response prevention and it is something I don't want to scare anybody here because I would like you to go and get this if this is something that you need but the general idea of it is that you not only do the thing that you're afraid of doing so either think the horrible thought or maybe enact and like dive into the fantasy like let's say you you have an OCD thought of stabbing somebody you would think about stab you would purposely think about stabbing somebody and not only would you purposely think about stabbing them you would like graphically think of stabbing somebody which i know sounds horrifying to somebody who um is having these obsessions but you do it with the therapist you do it uh, on your own terms it's not like somebody forces you to do something so they will walk you through it and they will guide you and they'll make sure you're okay and they'll make sure everything is fine 
Um, but that is exposure response prevention and it works. It works effectively and it will stop the OCD. Um, that's the traditional treatment. There are medications you can get that can help with this. There are other um, treatment options. That just seems to be the standard one that works the most often. There was something else I wanted to say and I forgot what it was. Let me see if I can think of it. If I can't think of it, I do have something else extra I wanted to say before we wrap up. I keep forgetting what I wanted to say. Um, I did want to mention that there is an obsessive compulsive personality disorder. I don't know how related they are, but um, that may look a little bit more like rules or um, typically somebody with obsessive compulsive personality disorder, they find it's a good thing. They feel like it's a good thing that they have these um, obsessions and compulsions and these rules that they have to live by. I don't know that it's so much obsessions and compulsions the way that we think of when it comes to OCD, but they see it as a good part of their personality trait that they're organized and that they do things a certain way. Um, and it's also known as anencastic personality disorder. Um, so for those of you who know the ICD-10, which will be the ICD-11 soon, um, and actually it may not be in the ICD-11 once it comes out. My glasses are fogging and distracting me. Uh, I didn't realize I knew so much about OCD, to be quite honest with you. It's kind of surprising me to me that I had so much to say. There is certainly more to say. I can't speak for everybody's experience of it, and I can't speak um, to every facet of it. There are others who maybe can do a little bit better than me. But let's cap this off. I wanted to mention that I went into the YouTube app on my phone today, and I saw that it looks like I can live stream, which was kind of interesting. It kind of terrified me too. I was afraid to even hit the button to see if it was like active or not. But um, it looks like I can live stream. You know, that's something that was limited to people who had 1,000 subscribers or above. Maybe they're starting to open it up to other channels. I don't know, but I would like to know if that's something you'd be interested in, in hopping in on a live stream with me. I'm typically um, around nighttime when I go out, uh, but if you're interested, maybe I can try to figure out a way to finagle it. So if that's something you'd like to do, let me know and we can try to have like a live chat situation here. Kind of terrifies me, but I'm open to trying it. I've, I've done live before on Facebook. It's not the most comfortable thing for me because it's kind of weird that there's not people in front of me and it's it's hard to, to interact and have questions and answers, um, but I'll, like I said, I'm willing to try it. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know. If you're new here, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you want to get all my videos um, to get notified that all the videos come out. Subscribing just helps me get extra um, features here on YouTube because uh, for those that don't know YouTube very well, once you get to a thousand, it unlocks some features that you can do here on YouTube. It unlocks my ability to go to the YouTube space in New York City and maybe attend some kind of like classes. Um, they also have a free thing online, which I do every now and then. For anybody who's interested in getting on YouTube and learning how to like do what I do here, they can teach you how to kind of like do it, which is kind of cool. So I've been doing some of that stuff. Car coming. <laughs> And then there's like, once you get past a thousand, the big push is to get to 10,000 because that unlocks even more things for you. And then I think a hundred thousand unlocks like the most stuff. They have like different levels. There's a whole system in place in YouTube. But uh, my goal right now is to get to a thousand. I've been pushing hard. Some of you may have heard from me on Instagram. So if you're new here from Instagram, hello. I started jumping over to Instagram to kind of like cultivate some people and bring them over here because this is where the action's happening for me as far as social media. Um, but a big truck coming by, hold on. All right, with that, maybe I should just end it. Thank you for coming and thank you for being here. I would love to hear your experience with OCD or any of the obsessive compulsive disorders. If you have any of those, let me know what that experience is like. Did I describe it accurately? Was there anything that you would add to that? Let me know below. And because um, this is all about you and this is all about our community. I like sharing and I like learning about you. And I, I hope that everybody here, I believe everybody here likes to learn about each other. So the comment section is where it's at if you want to do that. But thank you for being here and I'll see you tomorrow, everyone. Take care. Mm -hmm.